So I've been a software engineer for a few years now, and along my coding journey, I've been using IDEs like VS Code, IntelliJ, PyCharm, and things like that. They've been really great tools for me, especially when I started learning to code. It helped me, you know, really understand the file structure, helped me debug as well. And I feel like it played a big part in me developing my coding skills and just learning how to be a software engineer and actually do my job better as well. But throughout the years of my coding journey, I always found myself coming back to Vim. And for those who don't know, Vim is the OG coding editor where you can quickly open a file and make edits to it in the terminal. But by doing so, you kind of have to learn a few Vim motions and commands to make that all happen. My first introduction to Vim was actually in my college course. I think it was like a systems programming class, but basically I just learned how to edit a file and save a file in Vim. And that's pretty much it. And I didn't learn too many of the Vim motions or Vim commands to really help you, you know, make the most out of using Vim. So lately in work, I've been needing to edit files pretty quickly in the terminal so that's why i've been going back to vim and out of curiosity i just wanted to try to set up vim for myself and try using vim as my daily driver in terms of editing code rather than using an ide where it might be a little bit clunky or take a while to load up but yeah overall i'm pretty excited to learn vim properly because i didn't have the chance to and from other developers using vim i never heard them you know regretting learning vim and i definitely think it's a big thing to learn if you want to increase your productivity as a developer and so yeah this is my shot of giving it a try again. So I got to get back online for work, but later in the video, I'll show you guys my Vim setup and some new commands I just learned recently to help you navigate around your code base a little bit quicker. So I recently got this new bag of coffee. It's called Verve, and this is the Lupine blend, as you can see there. It's a medium roast blend, and it has notes of cacao, blueberry, and sweet pecan. It's pretty smooth, but it has like a sour smell and taste to it. It's not something that's too overwhelming. I've had other coffees where it's like light roasted and really sour, which isn't something I go for now, but this I can see myself drinking for a while. So I have stand up in around 30 minutes. And so before that, I'll share with you guys my Vim setup and some commands I found that were pretty cool to help me navigate around my code base. So this is my current setup. I'm using NeoVim, which is basically like Vim, but with additional extensions. So you can view your file structure as well and navigate around your code base. So basically the first things you want to get to know well are the Vim motions, meaning how to move up, down, and left and right. You can do that through, through the HJKL keys. So as you can see here, and then if I go to that file, I can move left, right, down, up, with these keys. And so I'm still trying to get familiar with it myself. I'm still not used to it. I feel like over time I'll get used to these commands and these Vim motions. So a new command that I learned is shift I. And what that does is that it goes to the beginning of the start of the line and allows you to start inserting text. And so if I do shift I, I'm at the start of the H1 tag. And so I can just write, you know, whatever tag that I want. Kind of like the opposite of that is Shift A makes you go to the end of the line and allows you to make inserts there as well. Um, another cool trick that you can do is Shift G A. And what that does is it navigates you to the end of the file and puts you in insert mode at the end of the line. It's just a neat way to navigate down to the end of the file and start typing away. Another cool thing you can do as well is type D twice and that deletes the entire line. And so that can be useful if you know, you're trying to remove lines without having to highlight anything. And this next command I thought was pretty cool to help you navigate around your file. And so let's say you want to go to line four and add a class to that div. You can just type four and then 
GG and it navigates you to that line. So again, let's say you want to go up to the script tag. You can press one GG and it navigates to the script tag. And so, yeah, you can basically use the line numbers as a reference to where you want the cursor to jump to. But another thing I learned, um, instead of doing, you know, the colon command Q to save and quit, you can do shift ZZ and that saves and quits the file for you as well. So that's my Vim setup and just a few of the commands I learned along the way. There are a bunch of commands that I might pick up as well, but I'll just stick to these and then slowly adopt some new commands because it does feel kind of overwhelming at first trying to learn all these new commands. So, so yeah, I think I'm planning on just sticking to the ones I know for now and then along the way, just adopt new ones. So far today, I only got in 4,900 steps, which isn't too bad considering it's, you know, in the afternoon, but I try to get at least 10,000 steps a day or get close to that. And based on what Google says, if you're walking approximately like three miles per hour, it's gonna take you an hour and 40 minutes to get 10,000 steps, which for me sounds like a long time, especially if you have like an office job and you're just sitting all day and not really moving around. For me, I kind of have to schedule in time to walk just to get close to even 10,000 steps. My afternoon walks, especially after lunch are ways that I kind of get my steps in as well as like in the evening when it gets a lot cooler because right now it's a little bit too hot out to go for a longer walk. I have a meeting with my manager in a few minutes. But after that, I'll show you guys the tech bag that I got recently to carry my laptop and some other gear. So I never really got my own backpack. All the backpacks I have now were given to me by family or the company that I worked for at the time. So for example, I got this Targus backpack from when I was working on Amazon for a little bit. This Salesforce backpack when I first started working, which is another Targus backpack, as you can see there. This has been my go-to backpack and I still use it to this day. This backpack is from Life Church from when I interned there over the summer. And lastly, this was a Cisco intern backpack that I got when I interned there for the summer of 2019, maybe. But now I'm ready to upgrade my main go-to backpack to carry my laptop and my other tech. And so I decided to go with this one. And so here I have the Patagonia Black Hole MLC Mini. I got this backpack in a smolder blue colorway. My first impressions when I got this was that it seemed like it was built with a lot of like intentionality with it. For example, you can see that there's loops here. What you can do is actually grab some paracord and then attach it to these loops. So you can strap some smaller items like your jacket or some of your smaller gear. So another cool thing is that it has a strap on the side here so you can carry it on the side like a briefcase. So this backpack has two main compartments. The first one being for travel and your clothes. So this is the first compartment. Once you open it, there are two pockets here. One is mesh and here's the mesh divider dividing the pockets and then your main compartment here. And it's pretty freeform. There isn't much here. It gives you a lot of space to put in your clothes or any extra gear that you have. I feel like this can also work as your camera backpack if you have a lot of like lenses or things like that. That could definitely fit in here. It's pretty spacious. And then going to the other main compartment, 
This compartment is mainly for your laptop and any other accessories that you have. So as you can see here, this is a pocket sleeve for your laptop. I was able to fit in like a 16 inch laptop just fine. And then this one's for your tablet or your iPad. And then there are some pockets on the side here for any notebooks or any pens and things like that. On the side here is the water bottle holder. I was able to fit a Nalgene water bottle just fine in here. Like I mentioned previously, here's a strap so you can hold on to the backpack instead of carrying it on your back. There's also this pocket here in between the two main compartments you can store any accessories that you reach for a lot so in my case i might store my airpods or any of my keys or badges in here so that backpack is going to be my new tech bag it was on the pricier side it was like 200 bucks for that backpack by itself but i think it's worth an investment since i'll be using that backpack for travel as well as taking it to cafes to do some work and so lately my spending habits have changed and i've been trying to buy things for the quality even though it's a little bit pricier instead of buying like like low quality many times. So this backpack is an example of that. I'm just buying for the quality of it rather than buying a cheaper backpack that I may go through in like a year or two. Yeah, just trying to switch up my mindset on what's the value of purchasing something compared to, you know, just buying everything for cheap. <laughs> So if I'm not working or building my project, I'm most likely editing a video. And lately I've been spending a bunch of my time just editing a video to put it out for you guys. And it's been taking a long time. I know some people have bigger teams and they can um, outsource their editing to other people. But uh, I've been editing all these videos this entire time. And I think I have like over 50 videos now. I definitely learned a lot about film and how to edit and how to use software as well. And so there's a time where I actually recorded how long it took me to edit a video from, from gathering all the clips to you know exporting the video. And it was around like eight hours. I've been now thinking about ways where I can improve my workflow so that I don't need to do any tedious task so that I can save time on certain areas, whether it's editing a video or finding ways to efficiently post. I found that there is like a YouTube API that you can use to upload videos or change titles of videos and things like that. I was going to spend some time looking into those because if I can export a video and upload that video in like a click of a button, that could save me so much more time. It is a tedious task but finding ways to programmatically do that for you is a pretty big time saver as well. So yeah, those are just my thoughts that I've been facing recently with this content creation. It's been a long journey, but I'm still a strong believer that creating content is the next big thing. So those are just a few things on my mind lately. For the rest of the day, I'm just gonna spend some time editing my video and doing some research and that's about it. I'll keep you guys updated on my Vim setup, how my app project is going, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.